reach me and and so I hope this would be this would able to resonate with you and eventually I hope that this would gonna be relevant and uh, just as you know for some of you I'm a brown guy and so my my accent is uh, very Southeast Asian and so some of my letter P would sound like F and so if I call pizza, pizza, forgive me for that. <laughs> but let's start with this. Um, the, the, the message is pretty much simple. It's our battle plan in conquering fear and discouragement. And like, come on, the last year, the last two years I've been here, it's been raining and it's pretty much like gloomy. And then at the same time, again, it's raining. And so we're like, oh, this is going to be so discouraging. But anyways, uh, last, last three weeks ago, I went to a um, team camp and it's somewhere in can you see where you are, Jackie? And um, and eventually, all of us kind of like experience this crazy stuff, like zip lining. So anyone here experienced that? And so that was really crazy. Uh, and then of course, fun yakking. I mean, that's fun. So and then the other was a uh, um, white river rafting, and that's a little bit kind of not hardcore, but to that kind of level. So and you need to understand. I'm not a swimmer, so and so for me that is very courageous. Now for me that's like facing my fear. And then there was these two things that they want us to do to jump off the bridge, and it's like 30 to 40 foot high, and then jump off the uh, the falls, which is like 25 to 30 foot high. And I'm so happy that God has given me this gift of holy common sense. Uh, and so in short, I did not do that. So and we we have our fears. And just like me, I just got kind of be vulnerable to you. Those are some of my fears. And I hope that the braveness of these teenagers and even the braveness of some of you who does these things would be translated in our own personal lives. And that is what we want to happen. A.W. Tozer, one of my favorite authors, he said, a scared world needs a fearless church. A scared world needs a fearless church. Now, my goal is very simple. I have only three points for you guys, and, uh, and, and I want us to dig down the battle plan and how, how for us, in order for us to battle whatever fear or discouragement that we have. And the first thing would be this. Number one would be any problem you face, it is a perfect opportunity to pursue God. Any problem you face is a perfect opportunity to pursue and trust God. My, my wife just read to you the scripture, Moses is dead. You experienced some deaths in your life, right? Maybe one or two of you experienced that. And two years ago, my friend Laura King is still alive, and she was with us. And it's really discouraging when you lose somebody that you love. Somebody is very special to you, and this leader is, is, is going to be taking a, a different role of leadership. And, and the, the, the awesome leader named Moses is gone. And actually, the scripture says in Deuteronomy chapter 31, for 30 days they mourn. They weep because of the loss of this precious and awesome leader. And now this is a transition. And I know a lot of us, some of us, if not two or three of us, are in some kind of transition. And that is what, what Joshua is facing right now. He has a new responsibility being the leader. Maybe you're a new employee here. Employee, and I don't know. Finding new team members. That's hard. And I know that as a pastor, because looking for volunteers, you're not just looking for bodies, you're looking for superstars that are going to help you out. You know, it's hard. And the and, and, and same thing with you, those who are in, in, in leadership position. <coughs> Working with hipsters and millennials, that's hard. <laughs> I mean, I, was, I, I saw some young people here. Why, why I'm saying that? Because Joshua was leading 20 years old and below. Not all of them, but most of them. If you know the scripture, it tells you like Joshua is leading 20 years old and below, and only a few of them are like old. Like Caleb and Joshua were old, and some of the priests were old. And so pretty much this is, this is going to be a challenging one for him. Executing the game plan. This is the promise that God wants you to do, and I want you to execute that. And it's crazy. And, then, and eventually fulfilling the vision. This is the vision, and I want this to happen. And this, this, we are facing this. We, we're facing the death of somebody else's and then eventually the new role. But eventually the Bible says, when God says like, hey, it's good for you to mourn. And actually they mourn for 30 days. Okay, it's, 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 it's not easy. It's not easy. But eventually God said, when you look at the verse, and, and in verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. <laughs> okay, like, come on God. Like, I want you to move up. And go forward, move forward. 
So after we mourn, God is challenging us, hey, arise, move up. And then he said, move forward, go forward. This is crazy, Lord. And then he, he promised us, and he, he promised Joshua originally, he said, verse 3, every place that your soul of your foot will tread upon, I will give to you. That's an assurance given to Joshua. And I do believe this assurance is also given to you and to, to given to me. Hey, I would just want you to rise up. You cannot, you cannot get the promise up until you move up and move forward. Are you with me? It's okay to mourn. Don't get me wrong. It's okay to mourn. When you lose somebody, it is okay to cry. Even Jesus wept. But at the same time, He wants us to move up and move forward. And in every place that we go, He assured us it will be yours. Okay, let me put it in a very simple uh, illustration for you as for, for all of us guys. For the sake of time, forgive me about this. I'll let you use the two other points that I have. Is it okay? Okay, I'll let you know, so that you, you're going to have a lot of time. But please allow me to, to give them this, this illustration with you. So I'm looking at the clock right now and you look at your eyes and your eyes was like, you know. <laughs> but I think this is the I think this is what the the, the message that's been impressed to me lately and, and I know and I'm hoping that this would work with you. Who among you knows Psalms twenty three? Psalms twenty three. I mean a lot of us love that, right? And uh, especially when there's death. I mean you you you, you can hear that Psalms twenty three being mentioned time and time again. And, 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 and I wish I could just stop on the first two or three verses of Psalms when it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I love that. You know, I will not be in need because God is all I need. I love that verse. And then he, he makes me to lie down in the green pastures. Oh my goodness, I love that because it talks about refreshment. It talks about rest. It talks about vacation somewhere in Copacabana. I don't know. <laughs> and then he leads me beside the quiet waters, the still waters. If, can you just imagine the, the river? I mean, I've been, I've been in, in Tennessee and I love the river down there. And I'm like, this is so peaceful. And so when I was doing the funny acting, I was like, Lord God, you are so awesome. I love those parts of our lives. And I love that. And, and how about that? He restored my soul. Don't we love that? The healing? You've been hurt by a, a boss or a co-worker or your, your son or your children. Or, and, then, and then you experience the healing? Don't we like that? I, I crave and I look forward to healing. I love that. But when you look at that chapter, it doesn't end there. It says there, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Come on, guys. You know this. You've been there. Maybe not really death, like, like, like a literal one for you. But this might be a death of your career, a death of a relationship, or maybe a physical death for some of you who have been undergoing a lot of surgeries already. No. But we kind of end there and say, we forget the next thing. Even though we walk through the valley of shadows, I will what? Fear? No evil for what? Yes! And the scripture says that also. When you look at chapter 1 of Joshua, wherever you go, I will be with you. So I'm hitting some of my points that I will not tell you eventually, okay? In verse 9, it says there, For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Are you with me? And then in verse 5, it says here, So I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Okay? And I was like, seriously, uh, um, Dr. Bolton, please join me here. And uh, um, Jackie, and then, uh, what's your name? Kate. Kate, uh, Kate, can you please join me here? Maybe for us to easily understood it, this would gonna look like this. Let me explain this to you in a very simple illustration. Uh, let's imagine Dr. Paul here is Jesus. What's his name now? Jesus. Jesus, the sweetest name I know. So, sir, can you please go on the front? And then, Kate, your name will gonna be uh, Goodness. What's her name? Goodness. And then Jackie would be Mercy. 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 Okay, what's her name? Mercy. Okay, if you remember Psalms 23, what? Surely, goodness, goodness, goodness and mercy 
Okay, so far. Listen, this is how it looks like. So this is how me, I'm going to put my trust on Jesus. Surely and goodness, come and put your shoulder <laughs> on each other. Listen carefully. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, who is following me? Jesus. Come on, guys. When we experience financial difficulties, who is following me? Goodness and mercy. When I experience loss of relationship, when I experience hurt, when I experience pain, who is following me? Goodness yes. and mercy. When I lose that one because of that, when I lose my job, when I lose my position, when I lose everything that is so dear and precious to me, who is following me? Goodness yes. and mercy. As long as you are following God, as long as you are allowing God and holding on to God because He is there with you, who is following you? Goodness. It is so clear. Let's get to the text, man. That is God's word there. Meditate on it day and night. Verse 8. Do not let the word of God depart from your mouth. And so that you will be careful to obey everything written on it. And only by that, according to the scripture, that you will be prosperous and successful in whatever you do. Because you know, because I'm holding on Jesus, and as long as I hold on Jesus, whenever I feel discouragement, whenever I feel, I, I feel the fear, I know that goodness and mercy follows me. Because that's what God says so. And then that's the second point, actually, holding on the promises of God. And the third point I already mentioned to you, honestly, God is going to be with you wherever you go. And so that is the whole idea of this. Bethany Williams had been through seven brain surgeries. Seven brain surgeries. And actually four of them, four of them was during her senior year here at Iowa. Four of them during her senior year of Iowa. The professors told them, some of your professors here, like, it's just just take a rest. And actually they told her to, you know, don't continue and have some break and take care of your health, which is very fair to say. But um, if there's some um, discouragement, she experienced that. If there's some kind of fear, she experienced that. And every time you go to a surgery, a brain surgery, it's four times during your senior year. And she said, I will do it. <laughs> I will do it. Her favorite, her favorite verse is um, Jeremiah 29, 11. You know, uh, plans to prosper you. You can look in the future. And, and so she was holding on that verse, despite of all the discouragement and the fear that is going all throughout her. And last May, and last May, just this last May, not this, am I right, this last May? Yeah, this May, she graduated in Indiana Wesleyan University, magna cum laude. Magna cum laude. <laughs> I don't know what are you gonna be discouraged for. I don't know what you're gonna be fear for. And then, and something that she put on her Facebook wall, I'm kind of like a creeper, right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is what she posted. On her Facebook. Fear, F E A R, has two meanings. The first meaning is forget everything and run, or face everything and rise. The choice is yours. Let me pray for you guys. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to minister to these awesome people of yours. They might be showing some kind of smile, but you know, Lord God, what are the discouragement and the fear that they are facing at this very moment. And I'm so happy that we can, we can trust upon your word, that you promise that you're gonna be with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us. Great leaders like Moses will leave us, but you are going to be there. And so at this very moment, Lord God, I, I hope that we're able to not only mourn about those kind of stuff that we experience, but we're able to, to move up and move forward and claim your promises towards our life. 
and at the same time even to bless other people as well. So I trust to you, each, every individual here who have their cares or have their fair share of fears and discouragement, and we want to put it down at your feet, and please take care of that and help them to be very strong and courageous. So peace I leave to every one of them. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Because my uh, particular niche of life in this season is um, deals with the training and developing of, of uh, pastors, uh, I'm excited that God is raising up gifted, godly young men and young women to serve Him. And I think that uh, you just saw a great example of that this morning. I need thank you so much for the, the great word pictures. Um, if you were taking notes, you have plenty of things you can fill up your Twitter account with if you want to. Uh, tweet several things out. But uh, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us this morning. And uh, we appreciate it uh, very, very much. Um, you now have a battle plan to face your fears and discouragement. And uh, just put it into practice. Okay, uh, new people. Do we have any new folks on this side to introduce? Lori, would you stand, bring your new people this way? I'm excited for her to get started. I'm excited for her to be able to help me while you're all the people we're hiring right now. So, so we're very excited for her to get going. A rebuttal, Brock? <laughs> <laughs> I've done enough murmuring. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the morning begins today. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, have you come have to come to come yeah, everybody has to come up front. Yes. Because, because uh, in all the regions, regional I know, I know why. Last year, so, but they don't know that. So. Oh, no. uh, uh, for the AES team here in Marion, this is Luke Smith and Heather Haynes, uh, and they will be joining uh, my team. You know, if you have someone new, let's just go ahead and line up on this side. <laughs> This is Brenda Pyle. Most of you probably already know her from Faculty Care and Textbook Distribution, but she's transferring today. She's starting in regulatory compliance. Any new folks from Center? This section? Come ahead. <laughs> Student account services, regular attenders standing here with new employees. This is Jacob Whitenack. He's starting today as a student account specialist. Any announcements? Uh, any more new people? Any announcements? We need to make this one. All right. Uh, we believe next week Nathan Metz is going to be with us to share with us, and um, many of you have heard him before, so we're excited to have him coming next week. Uh, let's stand together and receive the benediction. Benediction is really a word of blessing as much as it is a prayer. So, Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift the light of this countenance over you. Peace. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day.